I'd like to start off with this session with one question for all of you, experienced uh, men of this government and otherwise. Why do you believe today and 30, 40 years ago, the military primary, primarily has suppressed the whole idea of what might be unidentified flying objects or ex extraterrestrial? And we can start anywhere, but I, why do you think they've done that? Never mentioned it again, act like it never happened, it didn't really happen, you know, those kinds of things. Is there something we ought to know there? Anybody got a comment on that? Sure. First of all, I think it's the technology factor. Uh, if they do have tangible objects in hand and have learned some technology, that is a very valuable stuff. That we don't have. Technology that we don't um, currently have. That they have saying. recovered, yes. Oh, that they've recovered of if our they, If they have recovered no. UFO technology, that is very valuable stuff. Uh -huh. And that's worth keeping a secret. The other thing is, if they were to let the general public know that they have no control over these objects, that they chase them and can't catch them, that's something they don't want the public to, to really know. That's, those, are, those are very good. Uh, the first being that our country may have acquired some new technology that we learned from them and are now. I have no idea. Was that your first point? Was your that, point that something like that? That was my first point, mm -hmm. if they have recovered technology. Okay, all right. And that the is one point, reason for keeping a secret. Yes. The other okay. one is they wouldn't want the public to know that they have no control over these objects. These, these objects that uh, are seemingly controlled by some kind of intelligence. And why would they not want the public to know that we don't know what's there or that they might be superior? Uh, uh, Mr. Scott? They're, they're afraid that we would panic. We as a people, we as You're, a country? As a country, as, as the world, uh, uh, they're afraid that Western civilization would collapse uh, Western uh, religion would collapse. Um, the, it, your mind can go crazy on thinking what the might. worst thing, and and if you say, well, let's bring a one world government into this for a defense, well, that could prove to be a one world dictatorship also. So I can see, I can understand why the military and intelligence is keeping a lid on this until they might feel safe to let the cat out of the bag, but it's, it's gonna happen anyway. Yeah, and uh, those are very good points, both of those. I'm with Mrs. Hollis, and I'm gonna to come to you, Mr. Dole. Okay, I'll state the obvious uh, in, as regards to my case, and that is uh, these objects know uh, in great detail how our missiles operate. They uh, know ours, but we don't know theirs. <laughs> that's right, and they, they can, they can shut down our missiles at any time. Uh, they have proven that. Uh, they know in great detail how they operate. And so um, if you release that information to the public, um, what do you say then about, um, you know, what kind of defense do we have against these things? So. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Well, Captain? They, they could shut our missiles down until we put EMF filters on our missiles in the early 70s. And by 76, they couldn't shut them down because, in my opinion, of the EMF filters and some of the documentation that Robert Salas got unsealed, I looked at and found, in fact, in 68, after studying his shutdowns, they were looking at EMF as a problem. And I do distinctly remember our missiles being pulled offline one at a time before our incident happened and asked one of the members of the security uh, maintenance teams, and they let it out of the bag that it was an EMF filter, and then they got shushed for it. And I also accompanied a nuclear warhead. Our crew duty, additional duty, would be to do that on a convoy where we took a nuclear warhead out to a missile site to be replaced, to swap it out. So uh, in my opinion, that EMF filters caused a problem to these entities until they worked around that by the time in 2010 at Cheyenne, Wyoming. Uh, 
I, I don't want to disagree with <laughs> Mr. Okay. Festermacher, but I would like to point out that uh, about the incident that I just mentioned uh, in 2010, uh, the jury's still out as to whether or not that was a UFO incident where 50 nuclear missiles were shut down while objects were seen overhead. Uh, uh, but I, I certainly agree that after uh, our incident in, uh, in the early days, um, electromagnetic pulse or electromagnetic force was uh, uh, considered uh, a possible cause for the, the, the shutdowns, and, and the Air Force did have an active program to improve the EMP protection. Mr. Dolan? Uh, yes. I think the uh, answers of technology and panic are probably our top of the list. Uh, certainly, if even one artifact of a UFO were ever recovered, and um, those who have studied this matter in detail most believe that that is the case, uh, one can easily see why that would be a paramount interest to keep from uh, other, other parties that you don't want to have that technology. So the only way to do that for sure is to deny that there's a phenomenon that exists whatsoever. Uh, but we, we actually know from uh, the declassified literature that even as early as 1947, there were wind tunnel tests of disc-shaped uh, airframes that were being conducted at, uh, at, at Wright Field in Dayton, Ohio. And these were explicitly based on uh, UFO sightings. Uh, we have a, a document from October 1947 uh, authored by Colonel uh, Wentworth, I believe, in which he re references to this. So the, the obvious connection between UFO sightings alone and technological development is right there from the beginning. But the, the idea of panic is the worst because um, <clears throat> what we find in many cases is that uh, panic can escalate very quickly. Uh, 30 years ago in the lower New York State, Hudson Valley, for about three, four years, there were a series of unbelievably incredible sightings by, by thousands of people. Uh, this got the attention very quickly of national media by 1984. The FAA quickly and clearly had what could they literally say to the world? Yes, there's these enormous boomerang-shaped objects flying over the Taconic Parkway, but don't worry, even though we don't know who they are, we don't think they're here to eat us. I mean, there's, there's nothing that you could say, literally to the public, that would uh, assuage their fears. Uh, in 1997, over Phoenix, uh, we have the incident of the famous Phoenix Lights, in which Governor Fike Symington, at a press conference a few days later, brought out a big guy in an alien costume and basically threw cold water over the whole thing, ridiculed it. Ten years later, Governor Symington, at this national press conference in 2007, said, not only did we have to do that to prevent public panic, which was in danger of escalating greatly at that moment, but I myself saw the object in question, and it was unbelievable, and, and he offered his strong opinion. He's an experienced pilot, by the way that this is not anything from our civilization. Um, I've had an opportunity to uh, visit uh, three or four aircraft carriers that a hundred or more planes can fly off of in my uh, defense experience. And the young men and women on ship who, nuclear submarines, I might ask, uh, aircraft carriers as well as nuclear submarines. I've seen the nukes lined up on the submarine I don't know, 50, 100 deep look like in, in roles. Uh, we are supposedly the defense country of the world. If there's something in our atmosphere or in the world that may question that, it seems to me, this, this member, that we need to take a look at it. If they wanted to blow us up, it seems like they'd have done it 20, 30, 40 years ago. Maybe they want to coexist. But to not even begin to whatever, they, you got, guys got more intelligence than I have. It's, it's just the wrong way. I mean, there won't be a world. Who wants that?